Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Christopher sent me a story about a car rental nightmare, and it's not Hertz for once. Woman suing after renting a car in Las Vegas says, I would not rent a car again. Never. Brian Will wrote this for KLAS. The woman sat in jail for six days in August of 2023 after being arrested in front of her kids. This happened after Enterprise reported a Kia Sedona she rented in 2016 as stolen. So they're saying that seven years ago she stole a car, or at least the report was still floating around out there. So she's suing the car rental company. She said, it was horrible, degrading, depressing. I felt intimidated. I was surrounded by a number of police officers, and I had my two children with me, my one-year-old and my 15-year-old. According to the lawsuit, she had rented the vehicle in October of 2016 to move her family from Las Vegas to Pittsburgh. But on October 9th of 2016, she called to extend her rental until November 1st, 2016. According to the lawsuit, an employee of Enterprise named Doug told her to return it by the new date and put the keys under the front seat. She did just that, returned the rental on October 31st, a day before the rental was up. Now, that didn't stop a criminal complaint being filed in Nevada on December 9th of that same year, alleging a felony charge against her for embezzling a rental vehicle. And they said on August 5th, 2016, which of course is two months before she'd rented it. So their bookkeeping issues are all over the board here. And one problem, obviously, is that she rented it in Vegas and drove it to Pittsburgh. And that appears to be part of the confusion. So in February of 2017, she received an email confirming that she'd returned the vehicle. Fast forward seven years, she's pulled over for a minor traffic infraction. That's where she found out there was a warrant out for her from Nevada, arrested in front of her kids. She says, now I have these charges that still exist, and although the charges have been dismissed, they're not gone. What is more egregious is that after we filed this lawsuit, they recently sent a letter saying, hey, you damaged the vehicle. (laughs) Report this to your insurance or send us your credit card information. And that's her attorney speaking. So apparently they think <laughs> they think that they can notify you of damages seven years ago and ask you to pay for them. There's a statute of limitations problem, most likely. I'm not going to get into it because it probably hinges on Nevada law. But Mike, I got a friend in Nevada who's an attorney. Can you tell me, can they demand and legally require you to pay damages seven years after the rental? (laughs) Uh, The woman says, meanwhile, I would not rent a car again. Never. Enterprise Rent-A-Car responded to 8 News Now request for comment telling them they're unable to provide details due to the pending nature of the litigation. Meanwhile, her lawyers are looking for others that may have had the same issue happen to them with Enterprise. Experts advise people who uh, rent cars to always hand the keys to an agent and get a receipt. If the office is closed, look for a drop box with a company logo on it. Always inspect the vehicle and take pictures before and after. And save all correspondence like emails from the rental company. And now here's the thing. I've rented cars. I've mentioned before that Enterprise is the one I've used. I've had the best luck with Enterprise. And I've rented from other companies because there aren't Enterprises in every airport I've ever flown to. But I've, I've rented from them several times. But you think about this and go, okay, but you know, you, 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 it's true she did not hand the keys to a human. But I'm thinking about, for instance, one airport I was at not too long ago, and I dropped the car off in the morning before they opened. So I put the keys in the drop box. And I remember walking away from the car, and I, I took pictures of the car because I wanted to prove that I dropped it off in good condition. But what if something happened to the car before they opened but after I left it? They're going to go, well, that's on you. Because when we first saw it, it was damaged. I've also mentioned before that I once rented a car in France. (laughs) Now, I got news for you. I took French in seventh grade and did not retain much of it. Did not retain hardly any of it. And I signed a contract (laughs) entirely in French. I have no idea what it said, literally. I, I, I asked the counter person. I said, is this probably what the... Ones in America say. And the person I was with translated my question, and she said, we, which I think means yes. Um, So I said, okay, and I signed it. 
And so for all I know, next time I go to France, I'm going to get arrested on an outstanding warrant (laughs) because you stole a car. (laughs) You apparently drove it down, looked at the Normandy beaches, never brought it back. Uh, That could happen. That could happen. And uh, again, um, you know, it's, it's strange because we've heard so many stories lately about car companies claiming vehicles were never returned. And I am very curious to know if you were to simply go into the books at Enterprise Las Vegas and ask them to track all the rentals of that VIN, of that, the, the specific vehicle that this woman rented, I'm willing to bet you it pops back up in their system. But what happens is somebody didn't catch the fact it's being dropped off in Pennsylvania. So they said, oh, the, the vehicle never came back here. File a report. Meanwhile, it pops back up on the enterprise system, and nowhere does it flag itself as, oh, by the way, I'm here. I'm no longer stolen. So they rent the vehicle out a bunch of times. Eventually, they take it to an auction, and they sell it. And meanwhile, there's this warrant just languishing, waiting for this woman to get picked up on a typical traffic stop, and then she's going to get busted and, and, and arrested on this outstanding warrant. So I don't know if this is something they need to really crack down on, but it might be. Because I know that people are complaining that Hertz was, in essence, using the stolen car reports as a collection agency. So if people didn't return their cars, they'd call them and go, look, you need to return your car. And they say, okay, uh, I'll return it tomorrow. If it didn't come back tomorrow, they report it stolen. Comes back two days later, and they forget to remove the stolen car report. I can also tell you, and this story just popped into my head, I've rented a car on an island before, a very small island in the, uh, in the Caribbean, down in the islands, as they say. And uh, I rented a car, and I said, so when is the car due back? And the guy told me, and I said, well, um, I'm going to have some issues, so I'd like to keep the car into the evening. What time do you close? The guy told me. And I said, well, tomorrow morning, I'm leaving. And he goes, oh, well, what hotel are you staying in? I told him, he goes, ah, just leave it in the parking lot, drop the keys on the floor. And I go, don't you worry about that? And he goes, no, it's an island. Where's it going to go? <laughs> Apparently, the island is so small, the guy figured if somebody were to borrow the car, they'd still find it. So again, for all I know, next time I go to that island, if I go again, I could get arrested there too. <laughs> so now I'm starting to worry about this stuff. But I can tell you that one of the reasons I liked Enterprise is that when I used them, they were very, very fast. You'd show up. Oh, got you in the system here. Your car's right there. Keys signed. Boom, boom, boom. You're out the door. And then you bring it back. They made a big show of it to make the process of dropping the car off extremely smooth. So they have a lane. You pull into the lane. And as you're getting your stuff out, a person would walk up to you and say, hi, you dropping your car off? Yes, I am. They'd stick their head in the door. They'd get the mileage reading. Not that it mattered usually, but they'd check it anyways. And then they'd walk around the car like this. And the person had a printer on a lanyard around their neck and they'd press a few buttons and they'd hit print and they'd hand you a piece of paper. And that receipt, I would assume, would show and go a long way towards showing that you did, in fact, drop your car off. But here the woman dropped the car off and didn't get such a piece of paper. And again, I also don't know for a fact that if there was a snafu someplace, like somebody typed in the wrong VIN or something, that my piece of paper might not have kept that car from being reported as stolen. So it's a weird concept, but I'm willing to bet you now that since I've been doing this show, I've talked about this a dozen times. Mostly hurts. I understand that. <laughs> but now it's, now it's enterprise. <laughs> so I don't know what to think. You know, you, you name a car rental company after Captain Kirk's ship. What do you expect? I mean, <laughs> I'd expect better service. <laughs> So, Brian Will wrote that, and Christopher sent it to me from KLAS. Apparently, that's 8 News Now. Woman suing after renting a car in Las Vegas says, I would not rent a car again. Never. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Every path has its puddle.